Happy Monday, everybody. Let's have another real side chat. Hey, everybody. Uh, wanted to make just a little bit of a explanation of what happened last week. I, uh, I suffer from a condition known as trigeminal neuralgia. It is nerve damage in the left-hand side of my face. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is brought on by inflammation, probably caused from poor diet from time to time. And when it, when it gets me, it gets me pretty good. Um, it's not usually a quick attack like some other people get uh, because it's kind of inflammation based in, in my experience. It comes on for about a week and is rather aggressive for that period of time. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it is a very painful disorder. Uh, at night when I'm trying to sleep, it kind of shifts into a toothache that runs through all of the teeth on the left-hand side of my face. And lightning feels like it's jumping between them. Basically makes it impossible to sleep. Uh, Tylenol, that type of stuff, doesn't even begin to take the edge off of it, so you kind of just have to suffer through it till you pass out. Uh, during the day, medicated or not, uh, it, it shifts a little bit. You're not totally conscious of what you're doing. You know, you're not thinking about the pain all the time. So what ends up happening, at least in my experience, is it turns into a very deep pain that runs across my lower jaw. Uh, there is still some toothache here and there. It kind of jabs you. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's ever felt frostbite, but that's kind of what it feels like in my lips, uh, around my ear, kind of some parts of my face. Uh, like it's really, uh, really chapped and has kind of a tingle to it. Um, it is not actually that way. It is the nerve damage that causes that problem. And this particular time it has shifted a little bit and I've had the pain shift into my eye and then the inner canal of my ear. So it's a very sharp stabbing pain and it is very difficult to deal with. Uh, talking can be incredibly painful and just functioning on, you know, two or three hours of sleep for an entire week can make it, uh, make it difficult to, uh, to even work. So for anyone who has ever dealt with this, I, I feel for you. It is, it is something that, uh, as I get older, it worries me is, you know, hopefully it doesn't get worse. Um, but anyway, uh, Pretty well over it now, have a little bit of light pain. The inflammation seems to be going away. Just a reminder for me that I need to uh, to watch what I eat. So <coughs> anyway, uh, moving forward, I have a lot of stuff to get done on the layout. I didn't get a whole lot done because of, excuse me, that was a little bit painful, but uh, the, uh, the layout didn't get a whole lot of work done because I was struggling with this. I just didn't have the energy to get it done. Uh, I need to go ahead and pull it out and get a lot of my dirt work done in the back. I have my backer boards ready to go up. Uh, once I get that done, I will get them up into place. I've been saying I'm gonna do it for weeks now, but things happen. Uh, I have, I did finish the wiring of this entire layout uh, right before this kind of hit me. So the, the video I did about how I was going to make uh, my switch system work functions flawlessly. Matter of fact, all of the running videos that you saw last week, anything on these upper two loops here, they were running on DC while the rest of this was simultaneously running on DCC. So the, the ability to switch between them absolutely works flawlessly and I have had excellent luck with it. So uh, what that will allow me to do is when I do my review for the ECOS this week, I can have it plugged into my auxiliary setup and I can compare and contrast to the TCS system that I'm currently running. Uh, had excellent luck with this so far, been really, uh, really happy with the way it's working. So I will get to the review after I put a good month's worth of hard use on this, just to make sure I have all of the nitty gritty stuff figured out. The other thing I am working on currently is I am slowly trying to figure out the LCC system. Uh, again, last week didn't have a whole lot of energy to do this. I really want to get this automatic speed matching thing figured out. I've kind of got an idea of how I want to do it. And I think the LCC system is going to be the way to make it function. So then looking into that, it's going to require me buying some hardware. So not sure financially when that's going to happen. Um, the other thing I have been doing is looking into making my video quality a little bit better. 
I really like how the iPad has been doing my reviews. I found a good place on my layout. Hopefully the, uh, the video quality that you are seeing, like on the last one, will be similar to what we see in the future. Uh, I got a good place to set up my engines now. It's nice and close to where the camera is. The macro setting on the, the iPad is top quality in my opinion. Uh, I just need to figure out a couple of things with the white balance. It seems to shift uh, a little bit here and there. So that I'm trying to figure out. Um, I need to get a little bit better lighting figured out. Uh, that will come with a little more experience. But for my pre-review runs um, and anything that I do, like where I'm in front of the camera, I am looking at upgrading the video quality just a little bit. So right there I have a, a new camera. I sold off all of my old Canon stuff and purchased this uh, this Lumix camera. It has a phase detection autofocus, so it should be able to follow my face pretty well. And uh, with proper piece of glass, I think we will have excellent video quality and it will also help with my audio situation. Um, I will be able to run a shotgun mic a little bit easier on that, so hopefully that will fix that issue. So. Moving forward, hopefully we are increasing video quality. A um, little bit out of pocket on that, but I did sell all of my old Canon gear. So um, moving from a bunch of, bunch of different lenses to kind of just one lens and a really good camera. So hopefully, hopefully everything uh, comes together on that. So that will be coming in the near future. Um, just trying to think, I don't have anything else Oh, uh, I am traveling to see the in-laws uh, Easter weekend, so there will be no live stream, and Monday we will not have a railside chat. Uh, all of my other videos will continue uh, as planned. That following week I will be, uh, oh, in my beginner series, I'm making a bit of a change uh, now that I, now I'm thinking about this. I ordered starter sets from Bachman and Kato so we can compare and contrast. I don't have them in my position, uh, possession yet. So I'm moving uh, the DC starter, uh, the next video, to the following week. We're going to jump into DCC this week. A uh, little bit of a switch from what I had planned, just so we can do the starter set comparison in that video. So hopefully all of that works out and everything gets here on time. Uh, so this week, yeah, we will talk about starting out in DCC. Uh, Friday, we will be doing the review for the ECOS. Uh, the following week, DC starter sets and how I would start in DC. And then uh, we'll be looking at the cab control that Friday, followed by the review that Sunday of the Scale Trains Tier 4 Jivo with the Lock Sound V5 decoder installed. So that will be an interesting review. I had some issues with those engines, so I want to talk about them because it is kind of a kind of a thing that I am running into that I'm a little little worried about with scale trains. So we will talk about that when the time comes. Anyway, that's about all I have for today. So I will see you guys uh, this, this Wednesday for the uh, DCC intro, if that's what you're into. Otherwise, have a good rest of your week. Bye now.